So um, Gabriel is a brand ambassador. Gabriel's from San Diego, beautiful San Diego. And you see him uh, almost regularly on Thursday and Friday. So today we'll see his artwork. And are we going to start with a um, photo presentation, Ethel? Yes. That's no, I'm... Yes? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm going to do the share screen now. Okay. As we always um, did here, we want everyone to connect with our guest artists. This is his Facebook account. This is Gabriel's account on Facebook. And of course, it's also on Instagram. Gabriel, the next couple of slides are some of your artworks. And it would be best if you could share this for these five artworks here, if you could share a line or two. Just like this one. This is a fun place. If you ever come to San Diego, you want to come check out this uh, little area. It's called Oceanside. Uh, this started out as a plain air painting, and there was a funny story. A friend of mine uh, was cleaning up the area and accidentally took my uh, palette home with him. So I actually finished this painting uh, in the studio the next morning. So. It's nice to go out plain air painting because you get to feel and smell the atmosphere of the actual place. Next. This is a wonderful uh, piece over in Liberty Station here in San Diego near the Watercolor Society of San Diego. And um, this was a fun uh, morning piece. I had someone that came and visit me and I had a quick 45 minutes to hang out with him before I had to go to another meeting. And this is just a really nice, quick, fresh painting. Thanks. Uh, I have wonderful friends who I adore. One of them is um, Angela Barbie. You've all met her here. And this is her, her beautiful city, Girona. And so I always look forward to uh, visiting her. And so uh, she gave me a photo to work for from this image, but I definitely look forward to visiting this beautiful city. Next. Here we have beautiful. Balboa beautiful. Park. Balboa Park is where my studio is. Uh, this is the California Tower. Uh, along with the Museum of Us. And you got this nice bridge here. And this is a wonderful piece that was uh, sold uh, during 2020 when we were all sitting at home. So it was nice to sell a big painting while we were all stuck. Next. That's the last slide. Very nice. Beautiful. Okay. So with that, Gabriel, I'm going to give you both a start, so you have as much time as possible. Sounds great. Thank you so much, because we're going to cover today. Let me grab this other camera. Today, we're going to be covering using the gouache with watercolor. And a few mm -hmm. weeks ago, I had mentioned something about using gouache with watercolor, and it first happened uh, just by accident, um, this was when I was in Bologna, Italy. Um, this is just on the other side of the, the main square there in Bologna. And next to the Neptune uh, fountain on the other side, you come around this big, large church and you have this cool area here. And um, I actually happened to have a little bit of gouache white on me, and I was able to create some really nice soft edges because this is in the shadows, and I didn't want to save my whites where this would be a hard, hard image. Okay, with that, um, took me down. I stayed in Italy, and we went down to um, what is called a painting holiday. Uh, 50 of us hop in a wonderful um, bus and we go to places and paint together. 
And this was a Venice, uh, a wonderful, beautiful place to paint. And here's Venice at night. And for some reason, this is showing up a little. Let me adjust as the day is opening up. There we go. It's a little bit darker. There we go. That looks that looks closer. All right. And then that got me going on a theme of boats. So currently I'm working on a lot of these harbor scenes. We've got a lot of harbors here in San Diego and I'm creating a lot of atmospheric, um, lots of saturated watercolor and then coming in and getting some really nice darks and solids with uh, the help of the gouaches. Okay, here we are. So a little bit of traditional watercolor with a little bit of, I guess some of you might say that this is kind of mixed media, adding the gouache and that's fine. But here we have a nice area of light because we're painters of light and I'm saving my whites in here. But in here, I'm using the texture of the paper with the gouaches. Okay. Thank you so much, Bella. I appreciate that. She said it was beautiful. Here we go. We've got, again, the luminous quality of watercolor and then the beautiful opaques. These are solid areas of a, um, you know, of a boat or some kind of item of some sorts that need to be solid. By having this contrast, we were getting this wonderful illumination with our watercolor. Here we go with another uh, illuminous where atmospherically, we've got some real saturated, I'm really, really pushing the product of Daniel Smith on what, how much paint versus water, okay? So I'm constantly getting in here with, see, there's paint still in here. There's, it's down in the surface of the actual paper. So, but here's my nice white that was saved, okay? And we got some nice saved whites right in here in our wonderful golden section, all right? And we got another boat series. And yes, I'm out of control with these boats. There's just, they're everywhere here. And again, we got, nice watercolor and then some really strong gouaches right in here okay moving along again we've got wonderful nice light watercolor and nice soft before this before this gate or this handrail all this behind that is done with the luminous soft beautiful light colors and watercolor super saturated and then coming back in here with this nice strong strong gouaches here again we've got the wonderful waters we've got the beautiful skies light coming in and by having this where we have lots of water and watercolor to gouache i'm getting that nice uh, spectrum of values okay so for instance we've got black right and we've got white and then we have midtones right so i like to get lots of midtones and lots and some blacks and whites in my paintings see that so it's really helpful to have a a good painting should have good values here we are really pushing more watercolor and less of the gouache, okay? I'm getting a real light sense over here, but back in here, we've got some nice elements. Yes, I agree. There is a lot of contrast. Thank you, Claudia. Again, here, we always know that we should have a focal point, which is the star of the show. This guy is a heartbeat. I liked this big giant tugboat thing that was back here, but it's just ambiance, okay? And then 
we've got some things that are in our peripheral, you know, something that's on the sides of us, right? And then we have our star of our show. So I'm setting the scene. We've got watercolor and we've got some gouaches. So today I will have my normal palette here that I take out planar painting. And off to the side, I'm gonna have some gouache. I like this palette here. It keeps it pretty moist. This palette, it almost pretty much keeps it just as moist as, as if it was in the tube, okay? And I'll be using that off to the side. And dun, dun, dun. here is my image that I am painting today. We've got a San Diego scene. This is the beautiful city of San Diego. And then we've got a boat here. I am working on 100% cotton. I'm using um, a Kilimanjaro and uh, love and respect to the loss of our good friend that just passed, uh, Joe Miller. This is his brand of paper. So I just wanted to kind of give my thanks to them and sending that paper. So whenever you take a photo or a few photos, so that day I went out and I took a picture of this boat and this boat. The next step I like to do is a thumbnail, okay? So we've got this lovely thing. Here's my first thumbnail. Then we have this other photo. And I'm working on different combinations of how I want to lay this out. And now I've got myself kind of <laughs> slightly confused on which one would work. So. I'm sticking with the first choice, and that's always a good way to go. It's nice to do these little sketches because it's going to be in your mind. You're going to sleep on it overnight, and then you come back with fresh eyes and look back and pick which one you like, okay? All right, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and start my demo. I do like also to print out a nice uh, monochromatic or grayscale and so i usually have that so i didn't bore you i went ahead and did my drawing and because we're talking about paint today so with that said i will be using my escota brushes this is a little more brushes than what i typically use but we just need one good mop that holds lots of water this is a Perla that, and this is a Perla as well. They both hold a really nice point. Then I have this Ultimo and I have a Travel Perla and this wonderful brush by Michael Salove. Um, You can get one of those from him. All right, without any further ado, let's hop into this painting. The first thing I'm going to do is create an atmospheric sky, okay? I need this sky to feel like it has air. So I'm going to dive first as a base. I'm going to grab some of this Daniel Smith's watercolor lavender. And then lots of water. One, two, three, okay? And then I'm going to just get that nice and light but I'm gonna add just a little bit of this uh, yellow ochre right here. And just a little more lavender, create that nice atmospheric gray. And I'm gonna go right in here, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna paint this lovely sky like this, all the way down to the bottom of this city. Okay, this is my first layer. I can drop a little more lavender, um, just kind of over on this side, right over here, like that. 
and then just a little bit of water. Okay, just gonna saturate that just a little bit. And then I'm gonna move forward into my water. I've got this on an angle, so we've got gravity working for us, right? The reason why we um, are doing this because as we have evaporation, we in gravity, this is slowly curing a lot faster for me instead of using a blow dryer. All right, the next thing we have is moving into our water. And I'm going to add some um, of this manganese blue. Now, I'm not going to like put it by itself, okay? I'm going to put it into my mixture here. So why am I doing that? It's because um, usually here in San Diego, the sky reflects, um, the water reflects back and forth with the sky. But uh, as we'd have it, I like prettier water than um, my sky and the distance that's going to be nice and soft. I'm dropping down some of this lovely manganese. And before we came in um, to this Zoom, there was a question about how did I come across some of these colors? And as you make friends, your friends will talk to you about watercolor. And some will suggest trying different colors. And it was Kathleen or Catherine from Texas that um, I got to give props to for uh, telling me about manganese blue. Um, so I tell all my beginners, if you want to do water, manganese blue, um, which she suggested, Catherine, Kathleen, sorry, um, that this wonderful color makes water really easy. So try it out, get a tube of it. All right, I'm adding more pigment, okay? So see this, there's more pigment. It's not running down here. All right, gonna come right across here like this. Now I gotta slow down my ADD and when I get towards my boat there, okay? Adding some more pigment as it's getting closer, it's getting rich in chroma. In the back, we've broken down the chroma, meaning a fancy word for color. And now I'm building, uh, since this is a white boat, this blue around it has got to really make that boat hot. Okay. I'm going to save a little bit of white over here. I'm going to carve around this boat. We will put some shadow color in there, but just not yet. Okay. And I'm going to bring this right on down with now the little help of some cobalt blue down towards this bottom. And just a little sleeping beauty for some granulation. There we go. Just like so. All right. And um, just to keep myself humble, I like to splatter some colors here. Just to freak myself out for some nice texture. All right. This is already starting to set up. This is starting to set up really nice. I'm going to put this brush away for now because now that I'm going over my next wash, I'm going to use a Perla. The Perla is giving me um, more pigment. So I'm going to hop in here and grab some more Sleeping Beauty. See how I did that? I've got some of mixture here and I'm going to bring in some of this lovely um, manganese hue. Okay, and then just a touch of the gouache. Okay, 
right like so and i'm just kind of i'm looking for that mixture that doesn't look garish and uh that is gonna look like a solar thumb i'm trying i'm trying to create something atmospheric that would work for these buildings as i'm putting it down now i want some hard edges and some soft edges so i'm going to use in between i'm going to use some water and come back to paint okay so some areas yes i need some soft edges okay and since this is so far away from the boat, I need the help of hard and soft edges. Okay, I'm going to come over here like so. You know, as you paint more and more, you'll gain some confidence in your strokes. And I just like to get in here and get out. I like to put down the stroke once. You won't see me doing this like back and forth, knickknack, paddywhack kind of stuff. And I'll come in here. Now I'm going to change it up just a little bit by adding a little more lavender. And I want to just make this building just a little different as it's moving over here. Now we're going to come over. This is going to go darker. So I can actually paint over that part of the boat. Okay, and then we're gonna go in here. This There's a building right there. And then we've got another building, but it's lighter. So I'm gonna get a little bit of watercolor white. This is Chinese white, okay? So I'm getting it a soft white for this building that is right in here. A little more of the softer white. You can also, of course, just get some water. But we know that it's going to lighten up really soft. Okay. Real soft over in here. And then it gets a little bit darker right about here. Okay. So this is my city and there needs a little bit of love this is where i'm going to just touch up this piece right there kind of tighten i won't go in here and fill in these little little lovely things see these little pieces right in here those are those are probably windows right so don't if it's not broken don't fix it all right and I'm liking that. I like how these, these are a little heavier in chroma. And then this side gets lighter in chroma. Okay, you see that? This one's a little taller. All right. Well, this is starting to dry, right? Because we're painting on a, a slant. And, but this is wet, okay? So I'm not going to come in here to the start of the show yet. So let's look at these boats. So we're going to get some more lavender in my little stew here. And my first boat almost looks kind of purple-ish. So I'm going to grab a little bit of moon glow right in here. And I like that. That's quite lovely. Uh, it's just, just magical. Someone has a question. What's your question? The brush. We have a question, the have a question on the Facebook side about what brushes you're using. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, currently, I'm using a travel size Perla. That's a number ten. Okay. And then my other hand, I have a studio size that's worn out. So I think it's a. I think it's a Perla 18. And um, yeah. And then I'll share the other ones as I go to switch. All right. Also on the Facebook side, we have a question asking for you to show the source image 
one more time, the reference photo. Thank you. Bet. Voila. So this is pretty, these are nice hard edges, but this is a photograph and a photograph, it gets flattened. Everything is all hard and I'm making a painting and I like my painting to have soft and hard and light edges. Lost edges, hard edges. All right, we're gonna get some of these boats coming in that are coming forward like so and there's this nice one right here and now i'm going to go in here and lighten that up with more pigment so i'm using the chinese white okay and then i'm going to come in here and make this boat now he's in the distance so i am playing off of your memory skills on what boats look like You've been to probably all kinds of different places and harbors with boats. And so I'm kind of letting you put some of your memories into my paintings. And so this is where abstraction comes in, where now really these aren't boats at all. These are just lovely uh, patterns we need patterns in our paintings, and we need a uh, wonderful balance. So there's a row of boats coming here. There's another row of boats and another row of boats. And when this all sets up, we'll start putting in some other little bits and pieces. But as you see, we're, we're kind of putting this thing together a little bits by bits, all right? I've got another little boat here. This one kind of comes a little more in a focus. He's over here, like so. Bum, bum, bum. Like this. And we will come back in there and make some other lovely details. But this is not the part where we do that. That will be coming just here shortly. There's a little buoy right here. We've got another little buoy right here. Okay, I'm building up my darks as I paint this. Um, I like working from light Gabriel? to dark. Yes. Excuse me, Gabriel? Yep. Um, your paper is off the screen by half. No, I'm in there. There's my tape right here and my tape's right there. I am fully on the screen. I see Why the do I see screen. your palette? There's my I palette. See almost all of your palette and half of your picture's not there. I have no, no idea. You. That's not him. Ah, yeah. wowzer. How about that? Wowzer. Well, <laughs> Thank you. That is a lousy, you're right. <laughs> Dang. Dun, dun. It might be your device. It might need to be recalibrated. I must, it must be my device because it isn't. Okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> yeah, no worries. All right, so we've got some lovely shadows. I've already got some wonderful color here. I'm going back to my mop brush. And so this is an Aquario. Uh, I think this is a 14. It's a good, a good brush that you can get any half sheet and lower with. Um, all right. And so this part of the boat all right here is nice in, in the shadow. This is all shadow here, okay? And then I'm gonna get a little bit of this lovely um, yellow ochre and the lavender, and I'm not gonna quite mix it all together. I'm gonna leave it kind of congealed and then drop it in here for these shadows, like so. Dun, dun. 
All right, we have another question. We got some shadows coming this way. This is all in the shadows here. Okay, so in order to have the light, we need some shadows, right? And I'm just a shape painter at this point. I'm just painting some lovely shapes. I'm letting the paint um, do its wonderful thing that's happening with gravity. I'm not at this point now uh, really concerned about um, the photograph. This is a painting now, and I'm now just looking at just the beautiful mark making that I can make with my brush, okay? So I'm still using this mop for this last one here, and then I'll switch over this lovely thing here and here. And yeah, now I'm done with that mop brush. I won't use that mop brush anymore, and I will stick with these next brushes for the rest. These are three different parallels. Okay. Technically, I could probably do the whole painting with this one brush because look at that tip. That tip is really nice. I could even spread out this wonderful tip like that, right? And then dip it back into the water and we're right back at the nice tip. Okay. And so it helps if you're used to drawing and writing. You might want to start with some rounds. All right, I'm going to continue with this little thing with a little bit of turquoise and cobalt green and a little bit of moon glow. I get this lovely tasty thing here. And I'm going to come right in and drop this in there like it's hot. All right, nice and sexy, beautiful color. And then we move into some waves or shadows, but not just yet. Okay. I'm going to leave that there for right now and drop in just a little bit of Lauren McCracken black. This is not the reason why this color was made, but this is one of the ways I like to use it. Now I'm going to drop some black right in here. This is more gray right now because there's a lot more water. And then I'm going to take some thicker paint of this ultramarine blue and build up this lovely goodness right there. Okay. Now, with a little help of some gouache, oh, with this other brush. I'm going to pick up some gouache and put some nice wet gouache right here. I'm going to do a little bit of splattering. This is creating some lovely noise. Okay. Um, it's nice. Uh, yes, the photo. That's a nice dark black thing. But this is my painting. Okay. Next, we've got uh, some boats up here waiting for some love. I'm done with that city. So since I got this nice dark goodness in here, I'm going to get right here. Underneath this boat is a lovely shadow. Okay. And then over here, we've got uh, some more shadows right here. Okay. And then if you want to make a nice line, if you have a rigger or a, a nice liner like this, you could make a nice line just by laying that down like this. See that? Get these tools to work for you. Okay. All right. Now we've got some other boats, right? We've got this one here. There's a nice, lovely shadow under this boat. Got this nice little wonderful goodness here. 
this comes up like so. Now I've got some more little dots and dashes. Why am I saying dots and dashes? As you will see, um, as things move back further, these hard edges break up, okay? And I'm gonna get this pigment to do that for me. Now with a little more help of just some um, water, I'm knocking down that darkness and getting lighter as I go back, okay? Gonna come in over here, get a little bit of these going like this. And when you when you choose a subject or you do a series, you kind of get familiar with how these things look and how they play. And, and you start to paint some boats more than once. I've painted some of these boats individually, and that's how I feel a little confident with them today. Uh, this is definitely not my first rodeo painting this area and more should it be to be able to present in front of everybody right now. All right, while that's setting up, this is setting up, I can do a little bit of stuff back here. And with the help of the gouache and the texture of this paper, remember again, I'm using this paper that is 100% cotton, and it's cold press. So that means that it has some lovely texture. And so I'm gonna dip into some gouache and I need some broken whites that kind of come around here like this. These are nice and subtle like so. There's some whites back there. There's some whites here separating just a few of these little buildings. And we get some nice little sparkles uh, in this building back here, okay? So with the help of this medium, I can come in here now and build up these wonderful layers. The reason why I like painting this way is because when I'm out there plein air painting, this painting is already drying. This painting is already like wanting to just cure and be finished. And um, there's some areas I need to stay true. So using the transparent Chinese white, it'll get dull. And so in this area, I need that soft white to kind of be there, but not really pop. So I'm getting a softer image right here. Okay. Now, with the help of some uh, gouache black, and then what we've got here. So the reason why I'm using also the gouache is because it stays true to its color. Its chroma does not evaporate on me. That problem that we have with watercolor, how we lose that chroma of about 15 to 20%, right? That doesn't happen with the gouache. So when I need some areas to stay nice and dark, I am using that gouache. So look at that. This boat now is not gonna like, this boat is dark in my photo, okay? We've got another boat here that's a little bit darker, like so. And I think this is a, a wonderful thing to try out. Look and see how, I mean, how cool is that, that I won't have to go back later when I get home and fix the value of this black? <laughs> it's a bummer when you paint this in neutral tint or with watercolor, and then it kind of just like poops out on you and gets lighter. Um, and the reason why, because I'm dealing with a different atmosphere out painting Plan Air. So I'm dipping into the black gouache 
but I'm mixing it in with those blues, okay? And we can just go, just gouache here only. All right, and then we've got some nice little darks right in here, like so. Now we're moving over to this guy. He's getting some more darks because he's closer and we need him to kind of come closer. So having harder edges here, moving here, we're creating some wonderful things. Watercolor, semi-transparent with gouache is opaque. That's very good. Thank you for mentioning that. So Daniel Smith has a variety of colors, right? That are transparent, semi-transparent and opaque. This is a good thing to know. And I can have more, if you weren't here earlier, I can have more opaque colors to make this water look lovely and translucent. All right. That I think um, I'm happy with it. I can leave it alone. And now it's time to get into our star of our show. With that said, I can get into here with some gouache. Okay. And I'm keeping my gouache here and there. And mainly watercolor here. So we've got this sail, um, uh, just a little ultramarine blue, and create this nice hard edge right up front. Okay, add a little more ultramarine blue and knock it down with a little bit of umber, and come into here as it comes down. There we go. And I'm just painting right through this thing here. Got all this lovely goodness in here. And I can have some properties like we see with watercolor with some dry brushing, right? This is where I'm gonna have some nice little areas of so depending on where you're showing your work sometimes it matters to let them know that this is a mixed media just you know read what the direction or what the rules are for a competition but really you should be already experimenting and playing with it before you decide to go ahead and enter that it's really dark on screen this is actually nice and light and blue let me just fix that. We're going to open our aperture and get a little bit brighter. Dun, dun, dun. Thanks for your patience. All right. Moving along, we've got some other washes here. We've got some white. And we're going to make this pole. And I'm going to do a nice little stroke coming right down like this, like that. And we're going to come into here like so, with this into here, right in front of our little guy there. I can also just add just a little bit of water with a napkin in my hand. I can control the water and just lighten this up and lift it just a little bit. And the same thing here. Gabriel, I have a question from chat. Yes. From Rita, uh, why not use an opaque watercolor rather than wash? uh because uh today's question the today's uh discussion is using the 
of gouache with watercolor. So yes, I could paint this all in watercolor, um, or I can be using um, both. So it's not it's not really a question why. It's uh, you just have another tool in your toolbox. Okay, you have an opportunity to try some more paint and see what paint does on the surface. Thanks for asking. All right, so we're gonna get in here and this is a nice little dark piece up front, like so. Now, what we're gonna do is it gets a little fatter and kind of wavy right here. And now those bolts and stuff that was in the background in the buildings aren't coming through my transparent medium. Okay, that could also be the answer to your question. Good questions. It's good to ask questions. If you ask questions, that means you're going to grow. All right, we've got a shadow that gets a little bit darker here, like that. Okay. We got another shadow, but I need it to be transparent. So I'm going over here to back to the watercolor. And I got this little piece right here. So now we're using the science of our wonderful paint. I'm going to get some buff titanium, mix it in with a little bit of this lavender to cool it down. And we're going to go right here, wake that part up. And now I'll put some nice little white washes with a little bit of music here. Okay. There's, I like paintings and it uh, almost to make it sometimes feel like there's music playing. And just like if you have a wonderful dinner, you have these wonderful things on your plate that just speak to you. All right, we've got some railing here. So this actually comes over that blue thing, right? This comes down like so. And this comes here and there. And we call that good. And my video just paused a little bit. Give it a minute. Bum, bum, bum. All right, it's going to come back, I promise. Let's see, we'll switch the camera for a second. So Gabriel, I have a yes. question if I and I can't tell if it's because of the just the, the screen or or um, is French, I see you're using ultramarine blue. Is yeah. it dark? Is it a little bit darker than French ultramarine blue? No, one's warmer than the other. And it's the, oh, the okay. French. The French is warmer. Oh. Than okay. the other one. Correct, right, John? Thank you. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. So uh, some of us are kind of. We are retinas and we see a little more sensitive than other people. It's not that we're better painters. We kind of, we can see just a little bit of difference there. And so, um, but that's a really good question because there's always these little, I did not, I'll be honest, I didn't know um, before I started getting on with John back in 2020, I didn't know about the two different ones so um we're all learning we're all in this like state of growing i hope i hope you're all growing and wanting to learn more and just die to your ego and you'll be a much healthier person i think so i got this lovely thing here just comes down and into the water this comes here and then 
There's a rope and down to the water. With some of the help of this cobalt um, green and sleeping beauty, uh, there's this little thing down here in the water. And I'm going to play with some moon glow. If you're not playing with your colors and your paints, you're really, you're going to miss out. Um, there we go. This little lovely thing is down in the water now, like so. All right. So here's the other reason why I like to use the, again, with the gouache. I know I can put a lovely little orange thing like back here. This is not in the photo, friends. This is this is me. Uh, it's hard to explain this part. This is just intuitiveness. But I know that this orange isn't going to lighten up. So that's why I'm using the gouache for this one. And I'm going to put another one here. OK. And what's happening there is we've got a nice little balance of a one and a two. So this looks boring, two fingers, but if we have one and two, it kind of creates this triangulation. So I got this nice little thing that's settling this boat, making him different than everybody else. All right, we're going to hop in to finishing up the little small details with these brush here. So I'm looking at the time, I got seven minutes, let's go. All right, we've got some wonderful goodness back here and this and with the help of a little bit of this great titanium, we got this thing here and a little bit of light on the other side. We've got some light hitting here and then we're going to come over here and this one, there's a nice big one on the back. And we're going to go with a little bit of goethite for that one. Come on, don't be shy. I do pour out colors when I go to paint. Um, not all the colors have to be put out each time. Um, but it is nice to have some fresh paint. But I am a big believer in the pans too. If you're using, if you're painting often, the pans are gonna be your friend and they're gonna stay nice and soft and moist, all right? All right, so we've got a couple of shadows at the top. So a little bit of gouache and a little bit of this yellow ochre. I can make this lovely color here. Okay, that is not buff titanium. Of titanium is here. It's totally different. And then we're going to come right here and put these lovely things on the top. This is music on my boat. Okay. Now let's get this shadow in here. Let me whip out this nice big brush and we're going to mix in our lovely shadow we have. So Get in some Sleeping Beauty, mix it right into this lovely goodness, right in there. And here we go, right off of this. this and I can still see some of my drawing, which is nice. Okay. And with the help of a little bit of water now, and the help of a little bit of dry brushing, I could finish off this boat. Like here. like so. 
there is a wonderful little thing of light of white. This is right straight up from the gouache. We're gonna get this little trim of white right in here, like this. And in order to have that dynamic, I'm gonna make this part of the boat just a little bit darker here. And bring that like so. And with a little bit of goodness, off to the side here like that and as the sun is coming out in san diego the transition of my lighting is changing the aperture again a wonderful other thing i can do now is and this gets a little scary but i can do some lovely little things of this coming down like so okay and with my spritzer i can now hit this and soften that coming down i have gravity doing all the work right now Okay, there we go. I could do this one other side to wrap up this wonderful Friday. Thank you so much for all of you. If you haven't got on my email list, please go to my website, Gabriel Stockton, signart.com, and sign up for my newsletter so I can can uh, be friends and I can stay connected with you, let you know when I have upcoming classes. Let's pull off this tape and see how this painting has turned out. Lovely. Love the love. Of course, it needs a signature, as every other painting needs. Oh, there is one thing I could do, and that is let's put in in the distance. I'm gonna get some of this gouache white, and now let's put in these wonderful little. There's masses here on their boats. Silly me. So the gouache is going over nice and opaque. Over here. And this side gets more of a darker mass. So we're going to make this lovely mixture here. This mass is going to come here, and this one is a little further, so it's shorter. These ones back here are shorter. These are shorter back here. There we go. Now we're popping and locking. Look at that. Nice. All right. Any last questions? Or forever hold your peace. <laughs> I appreciate all of you. All 106 of you. What? Oh, wow. you, guys, you guys are too kind. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. There it is. Wonderful. Lovely. Thanks, Gabriel. That's good. amazing. Thank you. It's a beautiful. It's a You're, a good, wonderful. you're a good teacher. You're a good teacher, too, while you paint. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, I always baby. wanted to be a teacher, but they told me I wouldn't because I have dyslexia. So I get to teach something I'm really passionate about. Yep, it shows. <laughs> How did you, John? Thank you so much for your amazing demo. You did great. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, thank you. Good job. Good.
the talk, you. educate, and paint all at the same time. Amazing. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining. Gabriel, thank, thank you so, so much. much. It was thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you, thank you, John. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thanks Have a good weekend. Thank you, Gabriel. Have a great weekend. Bye. Take care. Bye. Have a wonderful